welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's video is two chilling and spine tingling tales that are found on Reddit No Sleep. Of course, as ever, though, please do let me know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew? And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's first story, entitled It Found Me. Let's get straight into that. The last time I saw a skinwalker was in 2018 in Colorado. I have since moved back home to Michigan, have a civilian job and a beautiful girlfriend. And one night, about four days ago, my girl and I were in front of her house drinking beer and wine. It was around 11.45pm. She lives in a small development, mostly surrounded by trees and wilderness. The street she lives on isn't lit by streetlights, and only by outside house lights. And she went inside to go pee. And when she was gone, I started to pack up the chair so we could leave and go to my house. Well, her dad doesn't like me so I wasn't allowed in. I just so happened to be looking across the street... And I see something in the dark move. I only saw a glimpse of it, and then it was gone. And then I saw it again. And what I saw was maybe the side of it, and it was about the size of a deer. By now, my girlfriend came back, and I was telling her how there was a deer across the street in a brush. And she started to walk towards the end of the driveway, and for some reason, I remember smelling what smelled like rotten eggs at the time, too. And then I saw its eyes glowing greenish yellow, staring at me. I felt like it was staring into my soul, yet I didn't think anything of it since we were in the woods. My girlfriend said she couldn't see anything, and so I called her back and said, Look, you can see its eyes right there. And she walked back to where I was and looked where I was pointing and said, uh, That's not a deer. That's a... Uh, we need to leave now. And so he put the chairs up and got into my car and I looked at the doors. I asked her what she thought it was. And she said it was probably a coyote or a bobcat. She had a bad experience with a bobcat. Might try to bite at her ankle. And luckily, it only got her crock. As I was backing out of the driveway, I was looking in my mirror to look for it. Nothing. And so when I got on the street, I backed up a little more than what I needed to to get a better look. And that's when I saw it. It was running away from a car. It was bigger than a deer, and it was on its hind legs. My heart dropped. I knew what it was. It was a fucking skinwalker. I drove back to my house as fast as possible. I talked to my girlfriend about it, explaining to her what they were and how they work. I spooked her a little. I spooked her a little. After that... Everything went back to normal, until tonight. I like to unwind from work by sitting in the dark on my swing in the backyard. It's not really lit, but I live in a suburb, so it's never really been an issue. My backyard neighbor had a motion detector light in their backyard. Why? I don't know. It's only lit, but when there is movement, it gets brighter. And I was sitting there on the swing, listening to Motionless in the White. And the whole time I was out there, I had an uneasy feeling that someone was watching me. And this isn't uncommon. I get this feeling maybe once every 15 times I do it. Yet this time, it felt like I was being hunted. And I kept looking around because I thought I kept seeing things move. And again, it happens a lot, especially at night. And then the motion light gets brighter. Well, at first I thought it was my dog because she came out with me. As I was calling her name, I didn't see her running to me, nor did I hear her collar jingle. And so I called her again. This time, I hear her jingle from wagging her tail fast. The problem was, it came from my house, not from my neighbours. And as I looked hard as I could, I saw, standing on the side of my neighbour's house, a deer standing straight up. I didn't want her to think that I saw it, and so I casually walked back inside my house. Locked all the doors, and now I'm chilling in my room. Does anybody think that this is the same one from Colorado? If so, 
How did it find me? Or is it a new one? I'm so freaked out. How do I get rid of it? Whatever it tells you, don't go outside. It's not human. Let's get straight into that. I was in the woods. The air was crisp and the moon was bright. I was returning from the grocery store when the tornado sirens went off. The sound was the most awful of sounds. It was not a test. It was tested a week ago. And that is what I get for living near the Great Lakes. I was not worried. I had lived through two tornadoes before this one. Of course, I was home then. The path home from the grocery store was a dirt road. On each side of the road was a ditch, and there was a small forest on one side. The other side was covered with sprawling fields. I carefully drove into the forest side of the ditch. Not the best decision, but I was irrational at the time. I waited almost an hour, and there was no tornado. Not to say there was not anything out there. When all of a sudden, my car was brutally flipped over. It was fast and painful. Maybe there was a tornado, after all. I struggled in this position. I unbuckled my seatbelt and fell down to the roof. And I got comfortable. I was not leaving this car. After about five minutes, a car drove by. They stopped and they ran over to help me. A man walked out of the car and he was wearing a bright red shirt a red hat and jeans. The way he walked was very slowly and uncomfortably. He had blue eyes that seemed to not be able to concentrate on anything. I immediately noticed something odd. It was a bright day, so I was able to see his shadow really clearly, and it did not match. Now, my family has always believed in the supernatural. I was never allowed to sleep alone. I always had an older sibling in my room. I was never allowed to swim without a glass of holy water. But most importantly, I was never allowed in the woods. I was told there were things in the woods. Bad things. Your classic Wendigo and Skinwalker stories, but also less known things. I was told that there were creators that would hurt you and make you do bad things. They could shapeshift like Skinwalkers could, but they did not want to hunt you. They wanted you to hunt yourself. You're easier to eat if you disable yourself. And one of the most important things they told me was if the shadow does not match, run. No matter what it is, whether it be a squirrel or my own family, run. And I thought I was just being paranoid about this stranger. I never believed my parents' stories. I never believed it until I saw this person. Well, there was something wrong with their smile. Well, it was hungry. Eventually, they reached my window. They asked me to roll down my window. I refused. I felt like I should, but I know that if I did, something very bad would happen. Even if this was not supernatural, or there was something wrong with this person. The man had a raspy voice. After I refused to let him in, he seemed very upset. He had a tone in his voice, an angry tone. And after a while, he started hammering on the window with his fist Open up! And, if you don't open up, you will die! He would yell at me. I just prayed that the locks of the car held. He seemed to calm down after a while. He said, Listen, kid, you think that if you just stay in the car, everything will go away? But I'll be here, waiting. Those last words, well, they terrified me. Just as he finished speaking, the siren started back into full force. A voice came over the loudspeaker. Everybody please return to your residence at once. This repeated almost five times. I was looking at the tower, which happened to be pretty close to my car. When I looked back at the man, he was gone. And so was his car. And then I noticed my older brother's exact car was slowly driving by. He saw me, and with a very surprised expression on his face stopped his car and walked over to me. He was wearing a dark red shirt and shorts, and he looked very tired, like he had been driving for a while. He had very poor skin normally, but it looked even worse than normal. All stretched and bruised. He asked me, 
Why don't a Mary loving? What are you doing here? I open up to him, telling him everything that had happened. He just smiled at me and said, sure. He also was never one to believe mum and dad's myths. He told me, come into my car. I'll drive you home and we'll grab your car tomorrow. You look like you need some rest. I slowly got out. I was very cramped because I had been sitting in a very uncomfortable position. I was able to get out and I walked over to his car. It was a red truck. It was a Ford. A lot of Fords where I live. My brother always likes his trucks. I asked him about the new truck and he said that he and his love to the I asked him about the new truck and he said that he and his wife had saved up for a while and grabbed it. The siren was still going, but it was quieter now. I sat in the passenger seat next to him. He locked the doors and started driving. Just then, I noticed him licking his lips. Wow, 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 wow. Certainly another one. Wow. Absolutely intriguing and thought-provoking stories there. From my good friends over on Reddit, no sleep. As ever, a huge thank you to each of the authors for allowing me to narrate their work on the show. I really did enjoy your stories and certainly look forward to more of your work in the future. Well, guys and girls, as ever, you know the drill. Please do let me know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. If you're an aspiring writer and would just like to have a crack at things like myself, then please do get in touch with me at the brand new contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. As ever, guys and girls, I hope you're well and happy, taking a fight back to life and getting stuck in, or if you're studying or working, or perhaps you're a long-distance driver. Whatever it is that you do, I hope you're enjoying it and pushing for greatness. But above all, guys, remember, be safe, not sorry. <laughs>